Hey y'all, this is gonna be another sad boy episode. Um, remember the last one when I said I got into a routine and I'm happy now? That was really because I had a lot of free time, and when I have a lot of free time, I end up doing things that I have fun doing, and I'm happy. But after that happening, I had to deal with a bunch of bullshit. It's kind of how my life feels like it goes. Like, I have this long sense of euphoria and happiness when I'm with myself. But then it all comes crashing down. Like, I was enjoying it too much. And it's gotta, it's gotta go bad eventually. So what instigated it? Is that I think... I don't remember if I mentioned this. Uh, but I was gonna go to the Netherlands or something. Um, it's a double degree program and it's gonna be incredibly expensive and my parents visited me to give me some information on it and they kind of just wanted to and this is this is implied this wasn't said explicitly but it felt like they were coming to see me to sort of see what I was doing, see if I'm worth it, to fund me going to the Netherlands. And it was a disaster, basically. The result is just like, all right, we gave you all this info, now make a choice, though we really don't have much faith in you. Um, and I guess I should get into what happened during that weekend and why I am even want to go to another country at all. So, okay, I think this part is going to be the most poignant, pointed, important part of this entire talk. Um, we met up with an alumni of the double degree program that we were going to, and we heard all these terrible things <laughs> about it uh, that were basically just warnings, um, so you know everything, the good and bad about the situation. There's a lot of bads. It's mostly just, first of all, housing crisis. Accommodation is shit in the Netherlands. The crisis has been going on for a while. No one has any homes. Um, and secondly, internship, specifically getting an internship, is difficult. The internship itself, I've heard literally nothing about, but everyone kept talking about how hard it is to get an internship. So yeah, this dude was able to overcome specifically the internship part, and my parents are think that I'm fucking stupid and dumb and won't ever get one. Because, uh, you know, communicative problems, social anxiety issues, I've been like this my whole life. Comparing myself to that alumni that we talked to, he was very outgoing, super sociable, and even then, he admits that he prayed and got extremely lucky to get the position that he was in to get an internship. And here's where all the subtle comparisons, I assume, in their minds that were occurring in their heads. Um, this guy was actually ambitious, had, you know, a lot of connections and networking, and he seemed like a real, he seemed like he was gonna be a real successful kid, you know, uh, an Asian parent's dream, I suppose. And look at me. I'm pathetic. I stay in my room all day. I don't talk to anyone. In fact, I hate talking to people. So they're like, why aren't you like this kid? Why do you suck and are so quiet all the time? Uh, two reasons that I thought of. First of all, I act very specifically quiet toward my parents uh, because of tradition. <laughs> it's just been going on for a while. 
and 90% um, of the time I really don't have much to say to them. Sometimes in social situations as well, my view on having a conversation is not to react immediately to what the person says. Sometimes I would be afflicted by echolalia because I don't I have to repeat what they said in my mind to properly understand it. And secondly, it takes times for the thought in my brain to coalesce and then for it to be properly transmitted through my mouth. I've kind of talked about this already. My brain is just wired this way. I am cursed. Secondly, me and him have incredibly different views toward life, toward what success is. Again, you know, he's real, ambitious, he is sociable and hangs out with a lot of people. He seems like the kid who would be in a leadership role. He seems to want to, you know, make a real big impact on the world in a big noticeable way through actually working. And now I want to do the same. Um, I want to be remembered after I die in some way. And I also have a lot of thoughts I want to get off my chest, but I want to express them artistically, uh, I suppose. I don't really care about leaving an impact on people or the world. I just think that whatever I make will make a portion of people happy, and that's kind of enough for me. Also, I want to do it in a more hermit, recluse kind of way, because that's just how I roll. Again, I despise other human beings. I've been ostracized and looked at weirdly by everyone, and I can't keep up a conversation even if my life is on the line. I think at the end of every day I can recall every conversation that I've had throughout the day, think back on them, and I'm like, that was cringe. Like, after every single time I talk to someone, I remember it, and I think, I, I, I kind of evaluate and judge myself at how bad I was doing. I have my own incredibly niche, obscure uh, interests, and no one else seems to share them with me, and that usually ends up with me being disappointed. Every interaction I have with someone else is painful. Which kind of leads to the point of me being presentable to other people, and again, this expectation of being communicative and sociable. They kept comparing me to this guy who did enjoy talking to people, but that's exactly the thing. I don't enjoy talking to people. I think when I first started the series, you know, the video, um, humans suck, why can't I talk to anyone? That is the moment I cut off my humanity and realized that I am not a social creature and don't need to talk to anyone else to gain happiness out of my life. And it's been working okay so far. But I hate that I'm still being put under these expectations of being presentable. Um, specifically, my parents who keep dogging on the way that I walk, the way that I speak, it is fucking infuriating. You know the reason why I have fucked up teeth? Because I know I'm not gonna smile and show my teeth that often. But still, they're gonna pay fucking, like, millions or 
of rupee or hundreds of dollars to get them fixed. Because you gotta have those pearly whites if you wanna sh look good to other people. Well, okay, also, I, I could get a tooth infection. I, I can get a surgery for that, but if it's to whiten my teeth, I don't give a fuck. After this point, I was gonna say something really cringy, like, uh, why does no one accept me? Why does no one like me for being myself? Uh, but no, that was too embarrassing, even for me. And, uh, I also don't really care. So, I got the point across. It's pretty much all I wanted to say. Not only that, but, you know, I feel like a reason why I connect with media so much and watch so much of it is because it really does connect with me and explain my problems better than any person could. Like, Evangelion's all about, you know, depression, not fitting in, uh, and he, Shinji specifically says, why does no one like me? Uh, and you know, the Kato Shoujo stuff, with Rin, and Hanako, and social anxiety and everything. So yeah, there you go. Uh, one last thing, actually. Uh, I got a, um, I have dizzy spells. I think I got a migraine. I'm constantly dizzy. This has been going on ever since I met up with my parents like a few days ago. No idea how that came about. I'm constantly disoriented all the time. I thought it was because I was using my laptop constantly. But no, going outside, doing normie stuff also makes me dizzy. It uh, could be because I'm forced to wake up in the morning now, even though my sleeping schedule is 4 a.m. to 10 a.m. or something. Oh well. Um, it hurts. <laughs> it hurts, dude. Give me some uh, countertop medication uh, recommendations, please. Thank you. Okay, thanks for listening. Consume everything. Goodbye.